dear viewer, welcome to yet another edition of Taxes Today. This is a program aimed at informing and educating you about taxes and any other tax-related issues in the country. Today, as usual, you are with me, your host, Raso Chimbayo. My guest in the program is Mr. Ben Konje, Project Manager, Electronic Fiscal Devices at the Malawi Revenue Authority, MRA. He will be articulating on the benefits of EFTs to taxpayers and the importance of consumers demanding a fiscal receipt. Now join me as I take you to Mr. Konje's office. Mr. Bentry Konje, quite interesting to meet you again in the program. Interesting as well. To begin with, what is an electronic fiscal device or EFD? These are the devices which we use in MRA to try and track the VAT which taxpayers correct from the buyers of their goods or services. And instead of using any other a document as an evidence of a sale, we now use what we call fiscal receipts. And these are issued using these devices, which we call electronic fiscal devices. When did the Malawi Revenue Authority, MRA, introduce electronic fiscal devices? Preparations for the work started around 2010. But the actual introduction to roll them out to taxpayers, it was in March 2014. How many types of EFDs are there? And what are the functions of each? EFDs come in a family of three. In terms of uh, what they do, is the same. But uh, we have what we call electronic signature devices, electronic physical printers, and electronic tax registers. Now I'll start with electronic tax registers. Uh, electronic tax registers are uh, relatively very simple devices, uh, which are more or less the same as electronic cash registers, which ordinary taxpayers use. But these ones, uh, they have uh, what we call the physical memory, which uh, facilitates the storage of uh, the data or information. And then again, they have got the ability to communicate to our server using the GPRS. So this is the first group, and mostly it is used by taxpayers that were on manual and those that were using or, or ordinary electronic cash registers. Then the next group is electronic physical printers. I know you have been in game stores, uh, in people's, or ShopRite. So you will see that there are now new printers. There are small printers producing the same strip in form of a receipt as the old printers used to do. But the difference between these printers and those ordinary printers is that these, again, they have got the physical memory, and again, they have got the GPRS connectivity, allowing them to transmit information to us. So they can store data or information, and they can, again, transmit that information to MRI server. Then the other group, which is very important, is the electronic signature devices. These ones are different from the first ones because they are mostly used by those that have got computerized systems or accounting packages. And they may have their invoices which are customized and they've got some features which they don't want to lose. Maybe it's part of advertisement to their customers. So what we do when capturing that information, when they are printing, instead of printing directly from the source of the invoice to their printer, we have a device which sits in between. So it's like they are printing through that device. And what you will do is simply to append a signature, which is in form of figures at the bottom of the invoice. Can you explain the features of electronic physical devices, or EFDs? The first one is that, one, they have got two important memories. They have got the EJ, which we call the electronic journal in full. It's where all transactions which somebody is doing will be stored. Then, again, they have got the physical memory. At the end of the day, it's a requirement that the one using the physical device should command it to send information to our server. Now, when it does that, what is sent to us is a summary of their transaction. And then it is stored in another memory within, which is in belt, which we call the physical memory. That's the first feature. The second feature of these devices is that they have got the ability to transmit information connectivity through GPRIS. So when you have done your transaction, you are sending this, the final summary, which we call the Z report, the device is able to transmit that information to our server. But at the same time, if I want to read details of a specific report, 
I can now communicate back through our server to the same device and I should be able to get details of the transaction that we are making. Uh, these are basically the most important features of the devices which makes it reliable to us so that we can get the information that we want and then we can safeguard the revenues. But there are others like, for example, you cannot reverse the debt. So if you have a physical device, you cannot really issue an invoice which will indicate the past debt. Now in terms of conforming with our tax period, it means invoices have to be accounted for within the tax period because you cannot back debt. Uh, again, you cannot erase uh, the information. Once the information has gone into the fiscal device, it is permanently there. You did mention of a fiscal receipt. What are some of the features of a fiscal receipt? A fiscal receipt has got uh, a number of um, features which are important and uh, Let's go through them one by one. Uh, the first one is that the physical receipt will have the MRA logo. I'm not referring to the pre-printed logos which will have on the official physical receipts. They are usually in green. But there is a logo which will be at the very top of the physical receipt. Uh, this logo will usually come in black and white. That one can only be produced on the receipt or be printed on the receipt if the device is registered and connected to our server. So if somebody uses a device which is not connected to our server, that logo will not come out. That's the first feature of a physical receipt. Then the physical receipt will have words to say start of the physical receipt. And then again, at the bottom, it will show end of physical receipt or legal receipt. Those, again, there are the most important features. If a device is not registered, those will not come out, the two words. So you can tell that this is a fake. Then, again, um, these physical receipts, they have got uh, the date and the time. So if you go to a shop now, you pick a physical receipt, it will indicate the exact time when you have transacted. If you get a receipt which is not indicating the time that you have transacted, just know that they are giving you maybe an old receipt. That's another feature. Then the date, it will give you the date when it was uh, issued. If the date is different, it means somebody is giving you a receipt which is not for that day. Um, the physical receipt again will have to show you separately the amount of the goods which the taxpayer is charging you for his sale, and then the VAT, which has been imposed, so that you are paying what belongs to him for the sale and what belongs to government as a VAT, and then the grand total. Those will come out clear, and you will have to see them. Um, a physical receipt, if it doesn't separate, then it's not a physical receipt. You are watching Taxes Today. We'll be back after this short break. program today, I am speaking to Mr. Bentry Konje, Project Manager, Electronic Physical Devices at the Malawi Revenue Authority, MRA. Welcome back. Now, why use CFDs out of all devices out there? Around 2002 in November, we extended VAT to wholesalers and retailers. Definitely, we had projections to say we'll have some more revenues which would be used for the development of the country. You know, taxes are for development. But we are not able to achieve our targets. One of the reasons being that people were cheating. So out of that, then we had to do a soul searching. Went to other countries to say how have they dealt with that problem. That's how we came up with these electronic physical devices as a way of improving VAT compliance. What are the challenges to be addressed by electronic physical devices, or EFTs? By introducing these devices, the moment one has issued a physical receipt, we have the figures here. So if somebody decides not to remit at the end of the month, 
we are able to have the figures and we are supposed to be able to query them and we are able to demand to say this is what you have collected and can you remit, of course, with some penalties. Then some had the associated businesses and they could do any trick with the associated businesses, sometimes simply to surplus what they are supposed to pay to MRI. The physical receipts now are taking care of that by using physical devices. And of course, most of these taxpayers, they have always not been keeping proper records, small taxpayers, and they keep what we call incomplete records. It was making our work very difficult when we are doing the audits. But now on the part of sales, by having the physical devices, we are able to get their invoices, their car sales in advance. And they too, they will have that information within the device. So the other uh, use of these physical devices is to enhance record keeping. In all this, what is the role of the consumer with regards to EFTs? The role of consumers, which includes me as well, is to make sure that when we are buying anything, we are given a physical receipt if that person is registered for VAT. That is enforcing to make sure that the VAT is accounted for and goes to government. So the appeal is that uh, the little inspectors for our devices, it's not people working for MRI. They simply supplement. The law of the consumers is to be the first inspectors because they are the ones that are in touch with the suppliers demand the fiscal receipt, you are sure that the VAT is going to your government. What are the benefits of electronic fiscal devices or EFDs to Malawi Revenue Authority? I've talked of the problems we had. Those problems of non-issuance, parallel keeping of records, uh, not accounting for VAT, they are somehow minimized. That's the first thing. So it enhances compliance. But secondly, uh, we do visit taxpayers to make, find out if they have really remitted what they collected. Now with EFDs, our job is simplified. The time that we take at taxpayers' place is heavily reduced. Because our auditors, in their planning, they have information on sales. They are able to analyze them. They are able to compare what one has declared and one he, what he did not declare or what was in the machine and what has come to us. So by doing that comparison, when they go to the taxpayer, you find that one job is already done. Mr. Konja, the issue is what will happen to those who are supposed to use EFDs as required by the law, but have not done so? It's a known thing. This is the law. What happens to people that break the law? There are always measures to make sure that the law is followed. Of course, usually it's a few people. So if somebody doesn't use the electronic physical devices and then through any source of information we get that we make follow-ups and then penalties will be charged. And the penalties are a bit uh, heavy to make sure that once somebody is penalized, next time we should not go back and do the same practice of not using. Mr. Bentry Konje, it was a pleasure to have you in the program. Thanks very much. I hope Next time, we'll have to look at the other issues. The most interesting is to say what happens when the physical device is no longer in use. Until next time, when I will bring you another edition of Taxes Today, I am your host, Russell Chimpayo. It's goodbye. Mm -hmm.